Okay, maybe we can start off with the debate about yesterday's announcement. <laughs> this left side is smiling and laughing, and that side is not saying anything. What was the announcement yesterday? Dacha is legal, not as far as I know. Okay, in your house, what does that mean, if Dacha is legal in my house? You can grow it and smoke it. But not sell it and... But say more Afrikaans, I can translate it. In handel driven for copper sell and, and merch so as you can say. Okay? So you can't deal with it. Okay, then what impact do you think would that have on our learners? Maybe I need to move this side. I can always run from side to side. But you think how will this impact on our kids? Dat gaan definitief, zei meneer. Hoe komt ze meneer? Dat gaan definitief een pak. Van die, van die kunnen ze breken of niet? Ja. Um, hier, so jouw een pak betekent dat gaan ze meer gebruiken of gaan ze minder gebruiken? Oké. Okay, je ziet the, 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 the fact that dag is nou being legal for private recreation, smoking at home, and for not selling and not murting, not dealing in it. Um, it's going to impact on our learners that we will have more kids who will then be smoking the cannabis. Okay, that's what you said? Okay, who agrees with that? Okay, and who does not agree? Nobody. The others are sitting on the fence or maybe on the other side of the fence. Okay, tell me if you say it's impacting on the learners um, <coughs> their behavior, let's call it their behavior. What do you do with learners who are intoxicated or under the influence of alcohol? What do you do with them? Is that the only sanction they get? They must go home. Yeah, if they, if they sit in the class and they, they had liquor, alcohol. Or maybe they go out to a sports event or to a cultural event and they walk around the whole day stopping cool drink from a tin. And all the time it's mixed with something. That's what kids do. Do they do that here too, honey? Of course they do it here. So you don't have to sleep. They do it all over. Irrespective of class or, or, or what's the other one? The a, a cultural group they come from. They do it all over. Daha they smoke all over. All our schools. It doesn't select. You coming from there and they will be smoking dacha and those coming from there will use the hard, the crack and the... What's that they call that stuff that they put in the dacha? The white tablets, what do they call that? Mandrax. Oh, you know, the mandrax. Okay. So, so you say it's going to impact, but my question is still not answered. If you have kids in a school, let's start then with smoking cigarettes, nicotine. What is your sanction? when kids smoke at school, I'm talking about during school hours. What does your code of conduct say? How do you treat those learners? Do you smile and just tell them, I've seen you and walk past them and don't do a thing? What do you do at school? Nobody smokes at the school. Yes, yeah, so what do you do? So every time I want, to, I want to be sent home, I'm going to smoke and I'm going to smoke deliberately so that the teacher can see me. Okay? The hours will betrek. Who? Okay, they are called in and then you have a discussion or something. Yes, okay. But what does the code of conduct say about smoking and alcohol? Remember, the cigarettes, nicotine, alcohol are the two licit drugs. Still a drug. It's just, it is listed, it is, um, you can use it by law, if you are over the age of 18. So dacha applies, the same applies to dacha or to cannabis, or to taup, or boom, or whatever they call it, or grasses, or grasses. That's the latest one I heard, grasses. And then you think they're talking about their shoes. They're not talking about their shoes. Okay, so the same applies to them because they are under the legal age. It's still 18 and above. So the same laws that you have in your school for cigarettes and for alcohol, the same is going to apply to Dacha now. They are still not allowed to be intoxicated 
or to drink and to smoke at school. But you've got no control when they come intoxicated in the class. They've already smoked before they left home or the night before. And what are you going to do? Because do you know when kids are intoxicated by cannabis? You know how they perform. Don't know, you can't see them. Dan moet jullie begin wakker slaap. Hey? They sit at you. The, yes, they stay at you. Not really anymore. The kids smoke very sophisticated and that is why probably they gave into private use and private grow because they have it in its pure face without the additives of rat poison and all those things. That causes more side effects than the pure dacha. Pure dacha in itself, it, is, it has medicinal value. But I will only advocate it once it becomes lawful. Otherwise, I'm part of, I'm complicit in the illegal things. See, we can know about it, but it doesn't mean we can say, yes, use it. I had a parent yesterday for ADHD a learner, and the parent asked me if she does, she's not keen on giving him medication, but she will give him daha oil. He's 14, 13 years old. I couldn't say yes. You understand the dilemma you're going to have? It could also mean that now that the Mickey is being taken out, that focus, that um, then they will probably smoke less because it's not legal. They will wait until they go home, they have the grasses at home, and they will smoke at home. Do you also know that many kids smoke with their parents or older brothers and sisters? Okay, it seems like I'm talking about a foreign subject here. Do you know what Dacha is? Do you have kids smoking Dacha at your school? And you mustn't start here, this is the part that at least gives me a smile. Do you know what Dacha is? Yes. I've got your book, when you take your, 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 your diary back, please check if there isn't Dacha in. I might but do that too. Okay. <laughs> any, any, any thing coming from your side? Do you have kids having Dacha in your school? I'm Selling? Not You're not a teacher. Okay, so let us know who are you. Um, we're from and Remwachte is? Um, in Haba, it's a farm, we produce apples and peas. So what's your interest in a workshop like this or information? I've been to okay, okay. <laughs> do you work with... <laughs> yes. We deal with employees. Exactly. <coughs> yes, but this, yeah, but this is now more based within the school framework. But there are laws for them as well. Um, the wellness program? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see the global challenge. There's an increased increase concern that the use of psychoactive substances in South Africa, psychoactive substances is any drug that alters the brain, the mind. So it's all drugs. It has impact on our schools because the quality of teaching and learning will be compromised. And the, the danger is with the cannabis is that if they are intoxicated and you're not aware, you will teach and you will only find out when they are assessed that they know, they know nothing. It's almost as if you didn't teach anything of that subject. Because when, when you were teaching, they could not learn. Because their brain did not attend or focus 100%. If no information goes in, nothing can come out. Okay? So that is the key barrier to teaching and learning. And this is in all spheres of, of, of South Africa. And the, the, it leads to academic difficulties. People often say, especially with cannabis, it's a herb, it's medicinal, it's in the Bible. They want to legitimize their use of it, but long-term use has, um, leads to um, difficulties in learning. The fat cells in the brain, you'll see later over the video's not playing, but the neurons in the brain. Do you remember those who did bio and neuron? And then it has like uh, arms, because this stuff here connects with the one next to, for the message to go through. Like if I see that balloon, for me to realize or to say it's a balloon and it's a blue balloon, it's an a inflated blue balloon, I see it through my eyes, the message goes back to the neurons, it relays all those messages, and it comes out as an inflated blue balloon. So that is the neurons. So that is why their learning becomes stagnated because the message doesn't go through to output is talking about it or writing about it. 
And nowadays with the different learning styles, we must also allow the kids to dance and to sing and to rap and to do whatever they like to do with it as long as they know the schoolwork. Okay, so you can see it impacts also teenage pregnancies, HIV AIDS, STDs and school dropout. The absenteeism that immediately um, raises and it uh, rises to questions also because if kids are absent, they're either involved in sex or they're involved in smoking drugs or using drugs. Because they have those parties or fests, they call it. Sometimes they'll bunk a week, one day at a time at each friend's house, and they have different, they go through a week of binging, alcohol, drugs, and all that at each other. We had kids of that also. If you have a question, just ask right through, eh? The stats, 12% indicated ever taken at least one illegal drug, such as heroin, mandrax, cocaine, tuck. Those are the heavy ones, okay? Adolescents in Cape Town have been particularly affected by TUC, and we all know the damage of TUC. Despite policy and legislation, 13% use alcohol, 8% cannabis, and 9% of learners have been offered, sold, or given an illegal drug on school property. Sometimes schools are fenced in, but there's still a part of the fence or the, the drug merts or drug laws, they still have access to the kids. Some school says, and there is a circular, about to search learners, it's called, it's 22 of 2012, searches and seizures, what procedures you must go about to search learners. Some schools do that um, randomly, because if I know tomorrow's Wednesday and tomorrow is search day, I will have nothing on me. So they do have then those practices. Okay. Second is the South African Community Epidemiology of Network of Drug Use. This last survey was done in 2002. And it's now time, so every 10 years they're supposed to do a new survey, but they did not do it. Okay, one fifth of primary school learners have tried drugs. I have kids from grade one, two, and three using cannabis. So that is no longer valid because that's 200 and 2002 statistics. From after 2010, we have our statistics at work that can show that kids are using Dacha from grade one, two, and three. And not yesterday, the day before, last week in Atlantis, I had a grade R. I had a grade R. So that is the first grade R. He's not even six yet. He'll be six in December. Okay, in high school, 45% have tried any drug and 32% were still using. So roughly, if you're at the high school, a third of your school, they are currently active drug users. Half of the school, they have already tried. And everybody we know as teenagers, we go through certain phases. So when we get to the experimentation phase, we smoke, and some can, they're successful, and some can't. We drink when we're a little bit older, or today is younger, they drink. And if it doesn't stop after the first use, the experimentation is only first use. Then you need to make the decision, Am I going to do it again, or am I not? If you don't do it again, that was experimentation. If you do it again, it becomes a habit. And once you do it for the third time, for tuk, even after the first time, you're addicted already. So anything that you do repeatedly, it forms a habit, and that habit forms the addiction. If you come home and you can't go without your Coke, you are addicted to Coke, okay? Or that cup of coffee. Okay, these are just pictures of, of drugs that you get, uh, get. it's the, the cigarettes, nicotine, dacha, energy drinks. Do you know about energy drinks? Especially those who are in gym, they drink energy drinks. Many of the youngsters develop kidney stones now of energy drinks. All the salt in it and caffeine in it, okay? And then there's some coke that they inject. Have you heard if your kids suddenly, or any of your family kids suddenly, uh, have this interest of wanting to grow plants and things and mushrooms, then you know he's into shrooming. <laughs> okay? Remember the kids? Bridget, the other, the other one that um, parents are not aware of is um, alcohol. 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 Yeah, I've got, I've got there. Yeah, that is what I want to get to. Yes. All OTCs over the counter medication, especially cough syrup also, who have codeine, it's a drug. Your grandpas, 
sometimes even the aspirins. Remember, aspirins medicinal and it thins the blood. So if they drink that every day, they're at risk of when they're in an accident, then the blood won't stop. Because if you are, uh, have a heart problem to prevent clots, they put you on like half an aspirin a day. Or what is that name for the heart? I know everybody's on that. I'm not there yet. Okay. But, but we, we often forget, and it's a good thing that she has reminded me, because we think it's okay to have that grandpa every day. You are addicted to it. It also does damage. Okay, and the other stuff, you know that. Um, what is a drug? It's a chemical compound or substance that can alter the structure and function of the body. Let's leave the psychoactive drugs, because that is rapidly, that's why with a tick, um, many people say you can distinguish when somebody is on tuck. Those are the mad kids. And they use the B word also. Do you know what the B word is? Let's amo bethander. Okay, you look in that word, ne? Let's amo bedonert. A kid who is on tuck, they mad. They run around, they want to break, they scold, they, they, they run havoc. So that is why they say let's amo bedi. Okay. Okay, why do the young people, why do they, are they using substances? And it's going to be too personal for me to ask you whom of you uses substances, because we all use substances. But um, have you thought, if it is so destructive and so dangerous, why do we do it? Give me an answer, why do you think? Okay, let's start with the easy ones. Who's smoking? And don't be shy to put your hand up now. Who's smoking? Okay, why do you smoke? <laughs> She's going to say, like the kids, I don't know. Why do you smoke? Yes. Um, but ironically enough, I only started when I was 21 years old. Mm. Um, but yeah, everybody did it, and then I also started doing it. And also maybe for the nerves, as a school from labor purposes, it's the ears that I want to do. Okay, <laughs> so she's using the nicotine as a calming effect, and it does calm you. When it's break time, a break from the kids, she needs a calm and quiet, and she takes a puff. So that, that is why she's doing any other reasons why. I, I'm sure you're smoking. <laughs> you don't? Because you look, you look down when I looked at you. Okay, tell me, why do you smoke? He looked away when I looked at him. Why do you smoke? The reason why I work is that the machine is a bit to come here, not to slaughter and all the stress around them. Yes. Okay, this workshop is not about stress, but that is exactly the same reason or some of the reasons why people use drugs. You need to focus on your triggers. You, s you already said stress. What is stressing you? You said the kids. How can you manage the kids' behavior differently? So you need to look at what's triggering it, okay? Addiction is a complex disease. Many of us don't believe that it is a disease. But if I am diagnosed with cancer, everybody feels sorry for me. Because you only have about four weeks or a year to feel sorry, then I'm gone. But if I'm addicted, nobody feels sorry for me because I brought it on myself. You see what's happening in, in, in our communities, the society? Okay? So, um, there's uh, risk factors and some people just have more risk factors than the other. And I'll do that for you now. There's your biology, organic reasons. You might, it's carried through in the genes. Your father, your mother, or grandfather, or great-grandfather, or great-great-grandfather, or mother. Okay, I'm just saying father, but I indicate both sexes. Might have had an addiction problem, therefore it's in the genes. And that is one of the decisions that I made. I'm too scared to touch one because it's just not in my genes. Okay? Gender, ethnic, ethnicity, presence of other mental disorders. Remember what that is, she spoke about stress and he spoke about stress. So when we speak about presence of other mental disorders, stress leads to mental disorders. So don't think mental disorders, are you mad? It's not mad, it can be just stress that I can't manage. And if I can't manage stress, if I possibly don't smoke, it would make me depressed. I would have a depression. See, there's, there's, that's your way of coping. So it can be of those reasons that I have in my family, people who couldn't cope, and maybe my genetics is also like that. 
the environment, she said it was because of peer pressure. Family and friends, when I was standard seven, I also had uh, bunking for a whole week, smoking every day. By day three, they realized I'm wasting the money. I'm just blowing out. And I was barred from the group because I'm wasting the money. I can't smoke. And good for me, I never smoked again. Okay? The economic status, status some kids start smoking because money is lying around. There's easy availability to money and buying with the friends. General quality of life, some parents do use, they have certain social parties and they have certain drugs, kids are exposed to it early on and they use it as leisure and the kids think it's fine. And you'll hear that some people, some kids say, but I do smoke with my father, okay? Um, physical sexual abuse, early exposure to drug stress, already said the parental guidance. Let's look at developmental. This is the only one that we can somehow say with, with biology also, that you don't have 100% control over. Genetic and environment interact with critical developmental stages. To understand that, when I'm an adolescent, now I start worrying, why the heck don't I have a father? Why am I looking different than the others? I always thought we all from the same mother and father. And I find out by the age of 14, 15, I have another father. Those, because when you start adolescence, you are looking for an identity. You're looking for a sense of belonging. And if that is taken like a mat underneath your feet, you feel completely lost. And you go there as a crutch. You use that to heal the pain. Okay? So don't always uh, critique people. Okay, that is more of that. Let's leave that. Let's look at the, the progression of the disease. What happens that you from taking the puff for the first time, of taking that beer for the first starts with beer, no? Start, <laughs> starts with beer, taking the beer for the first time, and then you become addicted. addicted. So what is happening there? It is experimenting, I already spoke about that, experimenting, controlled recreational use with parents, harmful use, which then leads to abuse, and those three stages, the person who are using can move in and out. Can be experimenting, can be controlled use or harmful use. Once he gets there, it is easy to be there where the person is unable to return to the previous stages. Okay? So you're going to see, you build up a threshold, what I do when I work with kids. I've got my uh, piece of white, white, the whiteboard or the... The, the chalkboard, the, the, what's the paper, the flip chart paper, and I start off with one smiley face. Why a smiley face? What does a smiley face mean? Yes, you're happy, you're happy. We all want to be happy, is that not a fundamental thing? Yes, we all want to be happy. So if I, and we only feel happy, we can only exert that if we feel happy inside. Am I right? So if you are not happy inside, it won't show on the outside. So for them, if you start using and you are into the harmful use, your body has already built up resistance or threshold. So you need, the Daha gives you that one. You take your first puff and you smoke or alcohol or nicotine. And um, she knows, and thank you for being so open about it. If I don't take that puff after break, everybody will know that I'm in charge here now. Okay, so what happens is that your body needs to take that puff to have that one smiley face. And that is why we progress from the one cigarette to the packet of 30 a day. Because at the end, and the kids understand it very nicely, if I start with one and I draw two, when I get to the end of the page, I've got like 30 or more smiley faces, just to be equal to the one smiley face that everybody's fundamental thing is to be happy. And it's, it's, it's in the brain like that. It's the reward system in the brain. If the brain is not rewarded, you won't feel happy. And therefore, it's not them smoking. It is their body asking to do that because fundamentally we all want to be happy. Okay? So once, once we get over that, then we can say it is dependence. And that is what I said. When we get at the bottom, you are dependent on that. You cannot wake up and go and sleep if you have not used any. We know that cup of coffee 
In the morning, you can't get into action if you did not have that cup of coffee. Same thing in the brain. If I did not, if I did not have my, it was first a chocolate on Fridays, now it's sushi. But it's still harmful. It's only 30 rand sushi, no? just four, don't worry. Um, may I move this a little bit? Okay. Okay. So experimentation, and I'm not going to uh, explore a lot. We've, we've done a lot of that. It is where um, voluntary. Only a few kids are being forced to smoke. But if you're forced to do it and your will, that internal will not to, then you're not going to smoke. Some people with peers or cousins, we force you to take that drink, they hold you, they open your mouth, they pour the liquor down your throat. They can't force you to smoke because then you chew the cigarette, but alcohol they can. So there's limited use, no development of regular use or substance related on. There's various reasons. If there's alcohol at home or even drugs, then they are curious to see what is going to happen to me should I use that. We spoke about peer pressure, social pressure, need to fit in, especially our adolescents. If I don't belong and I want to belong to that group, I will do what they do to stay in, to fit in. Early onset of substances is normally risk factors for addiction. The stat says the earlier the child use, the purer or the more true it is that he will become addicted in his life to one or other drug. Majority of people will not use the drug again, will not become addicted, and will not be injured or harmed. Okay, recreational use, social or casual use, used to create or enhance an experience, taking alcohol at social parties, some people at a social event. If I did not have that one drink, then I'm sort of antisocial. I'm a bit withdrawn and I don't talk, I'm not part of the... When I have that top in, wow, look at me now. We know those people, eh? who are very quiet when they're not intoxicated, the moment they have a drink in, and they must stay with that one drink because then they're actually sociable. But when they go over that one drink, they become a nuisance and we need to take them home because they spoil the party. Okay? So we need certain elements, music, people, certain places. So you will know also with your kids in the class, once they have, have had more than their limit, they act out. If they're within their limit, they will just be laid back in the class. Okay? You can easily slide into a stage of regular drug use. You may have experienced some negative reactions or seen adversely affected, therefore you're cautious. Many people, you'll see, find that with the youngsters. If they had one drink too many, they get sick. They vomit, they puke. They're sick. Okay? I had once in my car, my son used my car, and he wanted, he was 22, 23, he wanted us to know that he's drinking. Because we don't use that at home with his friends. They had, you know, the five liter water bottle? They use, what do you call the water wine? Chin and vodka, the clear wines. And they use the blue, that energite. And they mix it with that five liter of water. Uh, that's that 750 ml, the bottle. And the 750 ml energite, the concentrated, not the, the ones that you buy in the bottle, the spout ones, the concentrated liter, and the gin. And I said, you know, if you're going to drink, because it was in my car and you drink it like that, you're asking to die. Because alcohol is fermented sugar, that's how they get alcohol. And if you add more sugar, the alcohol content is higher. And then he just coolly said, no wonder we were all sick. So they were experimenting, and it was too much for their body. Remember, if you're not used to drinking, your threshold is still very low. And if you don't have a lot of body cells, then Raki ook gauw drunk. Okay? But sometimes I say people who are thin, alles hard out. So it means their body's used to drinking, so it doesn't even depend on the fat cell, they can just take a lot. Okay? Although I'm not drinking, I know I'm often with amongst dr drunkies, I know. Harmful use, and I watch them. When, when I did the, studied in, in addiction care, you have to do your practicals at clinics and hospitals and institutions for, the, for addictions. And you have to be amongst them to see how they do it socially. So therefore I know, okay? And probably if I am drunk, I'm not going to talk, because I talk a lot. Okay, frequent and pattern shift from occasional experimentation. That's regular harmful use. We actually spoke a lot about that. 
But the person does not even realize, and that is the danger. He doesn't even realize that his body is changing. And that is the part that is very hard so. Because if you realize, like if I eat a lot and I can see I'm getting fat, then I would somehow realize because my clothes don't fit. I feel unhappy because now I have to go and buy clothes which I don't have the money for. But using a harmful or abuse on that stage, you don't even realize the changes that's happening in your body. Other people observe the changes, but not you. Teachers would tell you, this is not the same child that he was now grade two, 10. It's not the same as he was in grade nine. Something happened. Teachers often say that. Okay? Um, so all you need to know is once there's regular use, that learner or person is not able to quit. Even if he tries, it is very difficult to quit. Addiction is a very difficult thing, and you'll see, because then they are dependent. And that is you need to know with a cycle. Addiction is chronic. People often relapse um, by compulsive drug seeking and use despite negative consequence, consequences and by long lasting changes in the brain, change in behavior, they act irrational. And that is exactly what I spoke about. Once they start being irrational, then it's a long road to recovery. You also heard a lot of AA. What is AA? Alcohol an an Anonymous. Okay. And what do people often say if they are at the AA meetings? We will sit all sit like this, but in a circle, and I stand up and talk, then what do I say? Hello, yes, hello, I'm Bridget. I am an alcoholic. Because <coughs> once an alcoholic, you're an alcoholic for life. Therefore, you say you are a recovered alcoholic. But if you're going to drink some people, even if they just get the whiff of alcohol, then their body asks for it, they want to drink. Therefore, people, if you're addicted and you're smoking cannabis, you have to change your friends and the way you do your social life. And in our communities, if we have parents that care, it's people, parents, who would move from, well, go to a different community to take their children out of this community. Because irrespective of sending the child for rehab, he comes back, there's no aftercare in the community, he relapses. Okay, so that is full addiction. Um, what happens in the brain when a person uses drugs? And now before that, when we, before that I need one, two, three, four, five people. Okay, you're going to yes. hit your balloons up in the air. And you play with it. You can hit any blue balloon as long as you keep the balloons in the air. Blue. Yeah, all your balloons. You must hit someone else's balloon too because you're trying that. He can't keep it in the air. You must keep it in the air. Okay, leave it if it falls. Leave it if it falls. Leave it. Okay, and keep that yellow one in the air, keep it there. The others uh, must keep all the balloons, try to keep it in the air. If it drops, leave it. Come on, play the balloons. You're not playing your own balloon. Keep, you know, try and keep the yellow one in the air. Try and keep the yellow one in the air by all means. Come on, play faster, play faster. Play faster. <laughs> Don't eat it up so high, you need to play faster. That's the game, it must be faster. Two is out of the game already. Okay, let's stop here. Because they're playing a ping pong game. They don't want anyone to lose. Okay, the idea of this game is only one balloon dropped. Um, they played the balloon high up in the sky to keep the balloon up there. These are adults. I find that when I use this with adults, it often doesn't work. With kids, <laughs> it works. Maybe they are intoxicated. Oh. But the, I, the, no, not you, the kids. <laughs> okay, first, first stand that side. How was it to, to play balloons in the front? Lekker. Lekker. Tired. Tired, okay, there's at least one thing I can work with. Tired, what do you say? You, you're still breathing, yeah. I can hear that. Yeah. Exhausting. <laughs> it was what? Exhausting. Exhausting. And excited. And excited. <laughs> yeah, but you were the one who played the ball the most. Okay? <laughs> why, why did you do that? The, the two of them were out of the game. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so you tried your best to keep it in the air. The two of them actually gave up. 
Hi, Essie. She's taller than me. No, 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 no. Don't, just, don't justify. The two, did all of you observe that the two was for a minute or two out of the game? So they were the two who gave up. This was the one who was persistent because she tried to keep the balls all in the, or the balloons all in the air. This one was going with the flow. Okay? Okay. The yellow balloon. And she would probably be the one is, is, is the drug. The yellow balloon is the drug. <laughs> so playing the blue balloons the way she did, trying everything to keep it in the air, was she will do everything in order to get her punky. Fix. Fix. Okay. <laughs> so she's the one that would, doesn't what it takes, she will go about in finding the fix. These two will give up, irrespective of whether I get it or not. They are already rock bottom, okay? <laughs> this one will take part when there is and when there isn't, it's also okay as long as I'm just going with the flow. Okay, yeah. But do you see with the kids, because um, actually uh, uh, the one balloon I tramped on it, so there's a hole in. Um, if you have the more balloons you have, if you see it doesn't work, so have more balloons, you put in more balloons. Start off with five and you throw in more balloons so that there's more balloons than people. Then it actually works much better for the kids. Then you'll see and they understand very quickly and, the, and you know how kids are? To use their words, they lost boss immediately after this activity. <laughs> they tell you who are the ones, yes she is like that. She will do everything, she uh, steals her mother's uh, uh, toaster, she sold it last week or something. They, they say that. Okay, you can have the balloons. Thank you. Thank you. Two for you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Give them a hand. Okay, so I already said that um, what happens in the brain, I've explained to you that it all has to do with the, um, so put the video can't play, it has to do with the, um, the, the, the reward circuit of the brain, this is very small and it's flooding the chemical the chemical that is, they use is dopamine and that is your feeling happy hormones okay so if you have enough dopamine you can feel happy the drugs take that away and why, and I already said, why do we need to be happy? why do we need to be happy? Hmm? why do we need to be happy? Isn't it also okay to be unhappy every day? Now tell me, I want to hear. Do it still, proud Afrikaans. <laughs> yeah, it's a lekkery. So it is a, it's a, it's a natural phenomenon. We are all born to be happy people. And that reward pathway, if you feel happy, that dopamine that's being set or released in the brain, makes you feel happy. If there's no dopamine, you're unhappy. Watch people who have a drug problem. If they don't get the drug, what do they look like? Yeah, unhappy and they want to fight. So what happens when people who are naturally have the imbalance in their brain yeah, are the, depressed? Yes. This is a drug. Yes. Uh, that, is, that is exactly the same. But the, because the drug is controlled, it doesn't give you an intoxicated feeling. Remember the dosage that you take every day to give you that chemicals that your brain lacks. So it's controlled, it is, it's a, a, that's why they call it a medicine, it is regulated, it's been tested, it is controlled. That is why they take so long with the cannabis oil, because they haven't done enough studies yet to see how much they must use. They know there's value in as pain, as a pain medication. But they haven't used enough studies yet to let it pass the medicine, medicine board in order to know what dosage they must use. And remember, even if I am depressed and I use too much, I will be further depressed. Then I will be the picture that we all think people who are depressed are sitting in a deep dark hole and they feel like nothing and they look like nothing. And it's like that. Depression has different faces. And I always tell people, uh, I'm speaking hypothetically, because people then ask me, are you really depressed? Okay, hypothetically, the nature that I have, I'm bubbly, I'm, what else can a person say? I'm friendly, I talk a lot, 
I'm all over the place. They say I've got adult ADHD. And um, if I'm not like that, then everybody asks me, are you sick today? Is there something wrong? Because mm -hmm. that's who I naturally am. But that is not, and that does not mean that if I'm like that, I cannot have depression. I can also be a depression sufferer, irrespective of being happy. You understand? So we can't see, it's not something that's written on my head. The same as I always tell the teachers, um, intellectual capacity is not written on the children's head. There's some kids who talk a lot, and when, when we assess the kids, you'll see he's actually weaker than somebody who never talks. And some uh, teachers are very um, baffled by the fact that, no, but this one knows a lot more than this one. This one's IQ is higher. We get it all the time. And so it's, it's, it's an internal thing that you can't see. It's not written on the forehead. Okay, we still tease about psychologists. Um, who's my age? There's only one with gray hair. Okay, when we were at school, the psychologists used to come with a white foxy. No? You know that white foxy? And the brown case. We still have brown cases, but now the new uh, ones have blue cases. But we still carry the brown cases to come and assess the kids. So it's still the same. We don't have foxes. We have Fort Figos now. So we've upgraded, or Polo Vivos, we've upgraded. But it's still the same concept, but the service is way different. Those years, uh, some cultural group, the psychologists had four or two schools for the year. Now we all have, okay, we have 10 circuits, so we have 23 schools per circuit, 22 schools. So it is the workers much more than earlier. And the other thing also with our kids, some educators think that they are intellectually impaired, but because the parents, remember the parents are younger today. They use drugs sometimes right through their pregnancy. And the kids who are born are born with an impairment. So it is because of the societal decay the, f the, the, the people that we, f we go in, they smoke dacha as if they are smoking cigarettes. You'll see the, the big dump that they make. And dacha doesn't even smell the way it used to smell when I was small and I saw. And we just took a wide circle around the dacha rockers. I don't know if you know where Alice's river is. Yeah. I grew up there with my grandmother and there was lots of dacha smokers. And when we saw that dump, we used to take a ompat, I used to a detour, not down there, because my granny always warned us not to walk past those people. So we took a reroute that way. <laughs> and now that I'm older and I know they're actually safe, I can walk past them, it's not the same smell. So the dacha has become more sophisticated. Okay, let's look at, 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 at what's happening in the brain. Okay, there's a picture of the synapses here. Let me, where's my, what did I do with the thing in me? Oh, always lose it. There's a, the, um, the synapses in there. See, this is a, a synapse, that whole thing. There's the brain. And that is the, the dopamine that's being set free. Can you see? Okay, that, let me stand, stand here. That part. The moment that feel that hormones is released, it even makes your neuron happy. It starts jumping around. Of course, it can move. It can relay the message, message. Feel happy, feel happy, feel happy. That's going on in the brain. Okay, let's see there, that is the reward pathway, that is your prefrontal cortex or the cortex. That is the part that the teacher, as the omen says, it's a groot voorkop in Islam, that's waar. It's your prefrontal cortex is there, and teachers access that part of the brain when you teach learners. That is the part of the brain that can reason, that does the reading, that does the writing, Although other parts is being accessed before that can do, like for writing you use your hand too, but that is a part that needs to be active. And you look at the dopamine release in there, it lulls that part. Depends on if it is a psychoactive, uh, let me just use the other word, if it is an upper or a downer. Now tuck is an upper, that is why they are upper the up. Alcohol and dacha is a downer, they lay it back. As you drunk as you slap. Ne? The Dacha children also, they all, oh man, they just go with the flow. Have you seen? Did you see him? The Dacha one, go with the flow. So you'll see that is a downer. Okay? And this nucleus accumbens is, is it's in there that it all happens, the stimulation. 
all it happens there in the brain, that nucleus accumbens, is the one starting that message of feeling happy, sending the whole brain, alerting the whole brain if it's stuck, and um, numb the brain if it is the downer. So that is just for easy to understand it. You get uppers and you get downers, and there's certain behaviors around that. As you wijn gedrunk het, of dagen, dan is je een laid back. So you're not rude in the class, you don't, uh, you're not fighting, you're not, um, what's the other word I'm looking for, defiant. You will probably answer back, but in, like, making a joke of everything. You understand, there's a difference between a child that's defiant. Who are you to tell me what to do, and I will say what I want to, you can't make me. Those are the defiant kids. But the others are, oh man, what's the point, why are you, you know that? They talk like that. Who's at the high school here, let me see. Who's at nobody? Yeah, those who are at the high school, that's what they do. The, even the grade sevens and grade sixes, they also do it. Okay, so that is the reward path where that happens. And then um, the triggers and the cravings. Remember, if you stop and, 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 and she will know, if the day changes, and the time that she has to go out to take a smoke break does not happen. How do you feel in the class? You start feeling jittery, irrit irritable, because you can't get your fix. Okay? So you get your trigger. Sometimes you're not even thinking of smoking. You smell the smoke. You know what your trigger is. Is it smelling? Is it an ad on the TV or on the radio? Is it somebody smoking? Is it just thinking? Whatever it can be something totally insignificant. You can drive on the road and the poles on the road reminding you of a cigarette, it triggers that you must smoke. Okay? If you don't get that smoke, you start craving. You start craving, when you start craving, you behave like where is she? Her with the blue balloons trying to keep everything up. Because she's craving to get it now. It becomes a ritual. Remember? People, especially in coke, you see that ritual, even in dacha also, cigarettes. Cigarettes, by the way, they just take it, but some people have a ritual. So what is a ritual? You've seen it when people use coke. What do they do? Two lines, yeah, they've got always a credit card. They make the two lines and then what do they do? Yes, they roll the paper or the money in the note and they snort it up. So that is the ritual, is getting everything clean. Putting the cocaine there, get it in lines, rolling that. Now they're sitting to the back because now they're going to take a deep snort. Okay? So that is what they do. That is a ritual. People with a dacha, they will start cleaning their pipe or their bong or whatever they use. Clean it every time, clean it. They never clean it after they smoke, it's always before. Clean everything, put everything. The dacha is there. Some people separate it. You find the pitches one side and this here. And they do their papers and their, what they call the thing they put in the bottle? Diamond? No? The foil, yeah, the, 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 the cigarette box. They put the diamond in there and all that ritual they do. Okay? So that is part of the habit forming for the use. And many times, especially you find it with alcohol, once they have used that after a binge, they feel very sorry for themselves. They feel guilty, they suffer guilt. They don't come out of the room, they stay there, they don't talk with anybody until they must not go to work and they fall into the natural path of surviving. They do that. They go on and next week, next weekend, they drink again and Sunday, you normally see that Friday night they drink, Saturday night, Sunday they don't come out of the room. They read all the newspapers in the world. They don't even come out and eat. Don't know if you are aware of that, that is the habit of people especially using alcohol, because with alcohol you see that guilt part is very big. And that is the cycle of use and abuse. Um, Some kids also drink Sunday nights because the parents go to church on a Sunday night. Then they have the house and they can drink. So it depends on your circumstances. If that guy is avoiding something at work, he will be intoxicated so that he can have a reason to stay absent. You understand? So you need to look at what is the trigger, what gives rise, what is the underlying thing that's chasing him. So that is, is, is important. Thank you for that. Okay, let's look at um, the craving. Somebody gives me the time. Okay. Let's leave that. Cannabis-related disorder, the short term. Let's stick with the cannabis in the school. 
the physical things that people often, they have irregular heartbeat. They miss a few beats or the heart races fast. And you'll see that with the kids. They even talk faster if the heart goes fast. Oh, that's something funny. Okay? Now remember, if we talk about physical things, if you see some in the class, you need to um, discern between whether it is something physical, it can be a real heart problem or lung problem, or whether it is cannabis-induced, drug-induced. So don't always go for the drug-induced. You need to monitor it. Okay? The psychological problems, we know we have a lot of that, and I already said that it, it worsens the mental health problems. There's lower life satisfaction. They're not the two who gave up here. Irrespective of what's happening, we're not interested. Even if I lose my life, or if I lose my wife, my friends, my what, I don't care. Okay? Problems related to family, school, work, or other important activities, even cognitive problems, big problem for the schools. We have, we've changed the, the, the CS, you all know her, the, what teachers of the CS framework, the CS policy. Het jylle gehoor van oom CS? Okay. So, with the CS, we, we have to have all those kids in our class, because the special schools are full. The, the change that CS brought along that policy is also that the kids in the special school, the parents now give consent per phase. So it does not mean if the learners like grade 1 in the special school, they can enter there when they're 18 or grade 12, whichever one comes first. Okay? They are now being revised every third year, every new phase, if they still need the special school, because there are many kids outside and they bottleneck the system and new kids can't come in who have a higher need of support. So that is the one good thing that's happening. You don't have a lot of special schools in this metropole, Overberg. I think you only have two. That is Kuiper Gullis for skill and um, what's the one here? Is near, um, in, 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 what's that one? Pl small place, Elam, what's the school name? It's for the, the severely intellectually disabled. Elam, it's in Elam, I know it's in Elam. Okay, so it's very difficult. I've got currently, I do the uh, ISPs for the behavior and the ex, um, expulsions. And I had for term three, 52 expulsions. In other words, kids who were not expelled and a few expelled, which is 15 and under, and we have to find new schools for them because they're still of compulsory school going age. Work closely with the social workers for their program treatment with institutions, referring, you'll see the last slide is about that. And the kids, one parent wanted me to assess the child, to make the assessment, to say that he's not going to use it again. I said, but I've got no guarantee, because I know how drugs work. They can be clean for a year. I had a brother-in-law who stopped drinking for 20 years, and somebody gave him an apple cider, and he was back to square one. And he, he then drank for five years, and after five years, he went into gambling. Still, still the same pleasure principle. Still the same pleasure principle. And, and it is a cycle that is very hard to break. But we must still not give up. You know amongst your friends, I can smoke, and I decide to want a man, this is nonsense. And I nip, and I never smoke again. But you will smoke, and you'll stop for a week or two. You will smoke again for a week. You stop for a month, and you smoke again for a day. You stop for six months, and you never smoke again. Okay, let's, let's, let's do the sexist thing. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is that the school related, we already spoke about that, the dropouts, the truancy, reduced interest in schoolwork, and the activities, early onset. I spoke about this earlier. If they start early, and remember what I said, the latest statistics, kids start using drugs from foundation phase. It's no longer that if you teach in foundation phase that you do not speak to your kids about that. And we often just talk about the dacha and the mandrax and the tuk and we leave out alcohol. <coughs> and I have an article where that person wrote, studied about all the, 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 the damage that all the drugs can do. It has. Alcohol has the widest range because it breaks up families, societies, and everything. 
alcohol is the biggest, I say, if alcohol was part of tools in a toolbox, it would be the sledgehammer. But today we don't often use them, we use power tools. So what is that that we use to break up? We use to break up the concrete or wall bricks with a sledgehammer. We use a, a jackhammer, okay? So um, the, what happens here with the schizophrenia? When kids, when they start, especially when they are 15 years old, adolescents start 14, 15, 13, they use too much. Because they see how this thing takes away the pain. Um, I don't feel, I don't uh, th even think of my father leaving us all alone. And then they use too much and they become schizophrenic. And that schools often, often report on. What's too much? Like every day, twice a day? No, depends on per, per person. For you, twice a day can be too much. And I can do 10 times a day, then it's too much. It depends on your shelf life, what the, the drug has on your body. And everybody's body is different. Everybody's brain, you wire differently. So we can't determine, you yourself should know. You, you can feel it. You know when you need to stop. Some people say, I will drink, and the moment I feel the first time I, I, I talk a bit slower, <laughs> then I stop, because I know I'm not going too far. But some people can't stop, okay? But that's schizophrenia. I've put of the high school kids, about four or five already, straight away admitted in a psychiatric unit, because um, they, they're a danger to the other kids at school. The one child, blocked off the bottom of the passage with cupboards, the, 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 the staircase, and he threw all the computers down the staircase, and each and every computer had the teacher's name that he didn't like. So he was getting rid of the teachers, because they are damaging the school. And, was throwing, and luckily I was at the school next door, and the principal phoned me, <laughs> and when I got there, I just said, phone the police, why do you phone me? Because we, we need somebody to detain, because they're dangerous. We need somebody to detain, because the police knows how, not, I'm not talking about what police do to, to um, scholars. You know, they always kick and hit and all that. I've seen it once and I never want to see it again. But they detain them nicely and then we can ask them to assist us in taking them to the hospital. Phone the hospital, they admit those kids immediately. The latest law now, we can't do it that way. If we, if we have somebody that's da a danger to himself and to others, they've got, I don't want to call it holding cells, but secure uh, hospital rooms or something, that they don't harm themselves. Because today, if you take a kid to an institution, with all the, I saw one parent from to say the child was gone missing. They came to the clinic and the child was just gone. And um, so we looked and I asked for, if we can review the camera, the footage, and we could see Past seven cameras, seven cameras pick that child up out by the gate. They don't do anything because you must be willing. They can't keep you there against your will. And that is, that is when we get to this spot. I just want to get there. Um, okay, let's first do this. Do you have kids in your region who, I'll get to that part, who use glue, snuffers, the snuffers? Where I live, I live next to a river. And there's five kids. They go to the door, like we say, every day. They come back and they sniff their packets. And we've actually raised the walls at the back because our hose pipe, the braai, the swimming pool pipes and all those things that all just disappear. And, and we have two pit bulls. But they must be there every day. So they know when the dogs is on that side. It's just a matter of jumping over and giving her things. Even the ladder disappeared and everything. So we've, the wall is high, but they can still get over it. Kids are like baboons. They can clamber and clutter all over. It's eight levels high on that side of the Viber Creek. They still get over there. But at least we feel a bit safer because uh, they, uh, they struggle. It's not that fast jumping over and out again. But that is what is the, the inhalant um, or inhalants, the related disorders. They get drowsy and drunk straight away. Remember, it's a gas. Like with the, with the um, um, coke, where you can sniff it, they can inject also. Once it's injected in the vein, it acts fast. With a tuck, they sometimes inject tuck also. It's very faster than smoking. 
If Dachar, you know what kids do at school? They buy biscuits and muffins and the salad and you have a happy class. <laughs> <laughs> that is how teachers find out. That only they never catch them selling it. But the class is awfully happy. Then they report it. Uh, we just send the kids home to go and sleep it off. And then when they res normally suspend for five days and the parents come in and then there's a disciplinary hearing. Because that is one of the nine serious misconduct. For those who don't know what is in the code of conduct about that, it is one of the nine serious misconduct. And it has to go the DC way, the disciplinary hearing. It's a hearing with the SGB and they make a recommendation to a head office for expulsion. What I've got right in our district office is at least now, I've got a lot of work, but at least now the principals get me involved before it goes to the SG. And now with the social workers, have you heard of the Form 22? Everything is a Form 22. Are they even mailing Form 22 to so me, I feel like a social worker now. Because that is also another form of intervention. Because then the police, uh, they select a, a probation officer who would do an investigation. Remember, teachers may not ask questions. You're not an investigator. If the child comes to you and shares something with you, tell you something, you just write that down verbatim, the way the kid said it, with swear words and all. You can put it in, in, in inverted commas if you feel you can't write it. It's inverted commas, it's not your words. Write it down to the police, one copy, and one copy comes to the education department, and they do the investigation. And I saw it on the latest form, they put my name on there. They put my, I don't know why, they put my name on there. I've got nothing to do with the child gets up and smacks someone, that this whole hand imprint is on the child's cheek. They've put my name on there, but it's Sarkis Tredun already at the police, so I expect the police to come and have a visit at me. And I can only say I wasn't there. So they will soon find out there's no use. They write my name on there. Okay, but for those children, so I would want, if the department sees, <laughs> the teachers don't realize it, if, there's, if some intervention has happened, then they would refer from head office that you do more, or they say, okay, irrespective of intervention, he's not listening, then, you, then they expel. And that is to come back to you. The reality out there is you're going to take that guy who stays three Mondays absent or four or three years and one day the boss has had enough. And, and he will tell you that this wellness program is not working, you need to be stricter and they're going to say we're going to subpoena your reports, we want to see what you're doing with them and all that and the people are being sacked. You lose your job and that is what we prepare kids for. They get away with a lot of things but if we are not strict and we adhere to the laws they go with that attitude into their jobs. And there's already a scarcity of work in South Africa. So they must learn the hard way. Okay. Um, the stimulant, we spoke about the tuck. The tuck is a very, very harmful drug. Extremely harmful. And you can see all the tuck users as we in the, in the dorp, in the village, in the malls, in the not, not really in the malls, they're always on the outskirts, hanging around. Their bone structure of their face, they, even their bone structure, if it's summer and they're in the shorts, it's just, um, <laughs> not kneecaps, knee knobs. <laughs> you just see the skeleton of the, remember this part is wide if there's no flesh on, and you see that, and the arms is thin, they sign you, you know, there's no muscles, you can see their face, Cheeks are taut, this uh, bone, your cheek bonus, the eyes are, it's almost like it's permanent too big. It's like they're staring permanently. So, um, very, very, very sorry that we have this in our societies, especially the kids we work with. If we are teachers with a heart, and I'll tell you now when we get to the last part, is what should happen is um, that, let's leave the coke quickly. The tobacco spoke about that. I spoke of the alcohol, um, I'm going to get there now, but before we get there, what did I say now? Um, yeah, as a teacher, we must always try and get help for the child. And I'm going to go into that phase where we want the young people to change. Remember, I s made the example here of just nipping the cigarette and then I will stop, but you will have to smoke 
hundred times. What the latest research, what they work on now, is harm reduction. Okay, because the more you use, the greater the harm. So if you have smoked 30 packets or 10 fixes a day, so you're going to work to do, get along, that nine fixes give you that happy face. And a week thereafter, eight, until you get along with one and until you say, man, this is a waste of money to smoke now, man, leave it. Okay, that's harm reduction. The other school says again that if you take me, because in the community, and that is what people in SGB say, but he has gone for rehab for four or five times for rehab. No use, we send him to rehab because nothing changes. And we say, and I give them articles to read so that they can develop an understanding. The more you send that person, remember it's about your wiring in the brain. The more you send him for the rehab, the more you give him hope that he can change. Because when he goes there for the first time, and this is what happens the first time, the stages of change. When you have that intake interview, then there are certain questions that you ask and to determine if this person now really wants to stop. You're going to ask, um, when do you smoke? How much do you smoke or drink or whatever you use the drug? How do you do the drug to determine the rituals? You determine the triggers, remember that slide we had in the front? The triggers, the rituals, the pattern, the habit and all that. So your questions is around that and it's very specific. And I've, I've been telling all the schools now, they have, many of our schools have their own counsellors or psychologists or social workers, SGB paid on the staff. Remember schools don't have psychologists and social workers at the school, they're all at the department. And like I said, we've got 20, 22, 23 schools, but they employ people and they render that service. If they say they have sent the child to that person for therapy, then I question what the person do. If the person, person has a qualification in a drug care, or they did um, motivational interviewing as part of their training, then they can deal with therapy for drug abuse. Because this, this is very important that you need to know when, if he's in the pre-contemplation phase. The pre-contemplation is, do I want to change? Well, some kids, if you talk to them in that phase, you will find out they are not even interested to change. They've got no desire to change. So then you know, you need to work on, on that. And it's successful, yes? Oh yeah? Okay. And I asked, what else do you get from them? You said, no, I only listen to that. Said, oh, was it the only thing? <laughs> yeah. Now I had an edge to come to this meeting and hear yeah, what is going to be folded up. Because I also needed to, to be aware and to be able to, to tackle with the person. Be so excited. Like, you even told me, the principal cannot tell me anything. The Dakar is legalized. Mm. Mm. I must we, 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 yeah, we spoke about that when we started, you were not there, but we will recap and then I will do a bit of that again. But it is very important that that person needs to know what questions to ask because if he's pre-contemplating to change, then the contemplation is easier because then you can start working on how to change. Then we have the determination. So it's phases that you go through. Am I determined to change? And we uh, do an assessment at every phase to see where he is at. And then if you're determined, then you have to take action. Because if you don't take action, you're not determined enough. And after the action is the maintenance, and that is very important. Remember I spoke earlier about changing community? Going away from the friends that is the trigger for the use and all that? If it's not, and this is, this is actually where we fall flat in South Africa, that our aftercare, if the, if the programs are six weeks, eight weeks, or three months, in when they are in rehab, they can cope with not doing it. Once they go back to their community, they relapse. They relapse, they start, they, they clear for three, two months, they start smoking again, and then the circle starts all over again. 
So for maintenance, we work on that. It's a family thing. If your child uses drugs, it impacts on the whole family. So there's a, it's all, all those, those um, support groups, we need more of those support groups in the community. And I read the Tiger Burger every week and I just, every week I'll see one or more and I get all the Tiger Burgers of all the areas that our schools are in. Because of what people and I collected, and uh, we spoke about now, the Tiger Burger is dropping it for me. All the areas, Mulnerton, um, the Bishop Leivis Elsie's River, Paro, Belleville, Goodwood, Kales River, oh, no, we don't have schools there anymore, but they give me the whole package of everything. So that when I have a list that I can refer, it's very important for the school, if you want to help the learner, look at your resources around your area. Where's your NGOs? Where's their Padisa or uh, RCSC, what? RCF, fear, fear, and all those things, or even other NGOs that you may not know of. Because that would be your first call. Because remember, the social worker at the district, this is part of their core function. I've got a conference for next year. They're not prepared to stand in the front and, and do it. But that is, they, they, they've taken it away from us. Um, from us meaning the psychologist, it's not our core function. So when there's kids using, they, um, we refer them to the so, so social worker. I am allowed to do that because I get those kids from the expulsion committee. And because I have the knowledge also. Um, so that is very important that we look at that. Pre-contemplation, as I said, they do not think about the behavior. I spoke about contemplation, openness to consider that the problem exists. I spoke of the determination. Person has made a definite decision to make the change. And you start a plan. You need to work out a plan of action. Remember with the CS also, and that is part of what I do. If the child goes for outpatient care, I work with the hospitals or the clinics with the outpatient, that plan of action, and I would give it to the school. But I would, when I give it to the school, I would have all the teachers that's working with that kid, and they must all do the same thing. So that is important that the maintenance needs to be created for the child, and that is part of it. Okay? So the next one is um, also the maintenance and relapse. I've already spoken about this. Change has been achieved. Pattern of addictive behaviors has been replaced with sobriety and strides into recovery. The person recognizes the benefit of successful change and must still be done as the risks remain for returning to the old. And it is important that you know that relapse is part of recovery. So if anybody asks you now or say, it's no use he's going for treatment because he relapses every time. Relapse is part of recovery. Relapse is part of recovery. Okay? Person must be on guard for triggers of relapse or end relapse. When relapsing, re-enter a stage such as contemplation or determination. Sometimes re they return to pre-contemplation. And it is not failure. Remember I said when we did this one, they relapse. And you need to start there sometimes if they're back to square one. But times if you catch them quickly after the relapse, you'll get them at contemplation or determination. Then it is easier. But once they, they, you start with their pre, then you know it's already far gone or further gone than you thought. Okay, let's look at, at um, what works and what does not work. Often uh, parents do this often, scare tactics. Teachers do it often. It does not work. If they say, if you smoke a lot of, lot of dacha, you're going to become impotent, although it is a fact. Although it is a fact. If you drink too much, you're also impotent. It is a fact. And then it will scare them off unless it happens to them immediately. And that becoming impotent of dacha and of, of, of alcohol, it means you are a heavy user. Okay, maybe for you, you will understand it better, they can't get it up when they want to get it up. That is the word. Okay, um, provide factual, non-biased information. So give them the facts. If you do not have information, we all have internet even on our smartphones. And it's very easy, be careful that it is not nonsense that you give to the child. You must distinguish and know when it's facts and when it's not. If it is an article, if it is a book, something, you know it's facts. 
But if they write their own opinions or the blogs and those things, it is not the truth. It's people's opinions. Okay? Um, information is not sufficient. Okay, focus on enhancing life skills. That is why we get those kids in programs. You will find if they're taken up into an institution, there's a great part where they do life skills. They do a skill, uh, a practical skill. Uh, now we had one, they actually, very hot, so they actually closed in, in, in Cape Town, in Easter River. They had a youth center for the kids between, say, 14, 16, 17. Remember, all the other institutions is for 18 and over. And they took the kids under, under um, 18, up from 14. They could do, the boys could do, many boys that were there, a barber, they're being taught the skill of cutting hair. The girls do hairdressing, they do weaving, hands up, leather work, upholstery, and all that. So if they somehow drop out of school, they can become self-sufficient. So they, if, if you remember, if you can do some, many of those kids, they have the learning problems, they can't learn. And it's better to be scolded at than being stupid, I mean, being naughty, rude or something than being stupid. So he'll rather use the drugs and the teacher will, will scold him because he's now intoxicated than hearing all the time he's stupid and he can't do it. He knows he can't do it. And you telling him every time he can't do it, you reinforce that and you actually, uh, 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 you actually weaken his self-esteem. Okay, if you want children to do things which they can't do, tell them every day, you can do it. I have all the trust in you. You can do it. Don't even say try to do it because then you still allow a space for failure. Say you can do it. And if it doesn't work, try again. So that is what you need to do. Okay, you need to motivate all the time. Um, then highlight short term consequences. Um, remember, if, you know, what is for, for me, what is very interesting, it's just a pity we don't have it here in South Africa. If you look at the first world, they have their schools closes at five or six. Remember, there were talks that our schools will close at, whatever. But then they have people who come in for aftercare to keep those kids busy, because the parents are all working. Keep them off the streets, because that is where the drug lords get hold of them. And some of those, uh, many countries have school on the Saturday, also a whole day six days so and it keeps kids off the school and we don't have the money my global knowledge about embezzlement and abusing the country's money is not that great so I'm not going to take a chance to say it's only South Africa that they steal the money it might be in other countries too I'm not um, okay with that but you know what's <coughs> happening in our country and we are already a third world country the resources the money that we have for resources just disappears in thin air Okay, um, programs should be sufficient in intensity and duration, involve parents and guardians, be comprehensive, provide referral information, consider the target audience, monitor and evaluate the program. And, and, and I, I want to reiterate when I said earlier that it's important to take the parents with and get them into a support group. Because that is if the parent sees what the child is going through in struggling to rehabilitate, they support the child more. Okay. Um, possibilities that we have, um, we have, um, I haven't looked at here, Heskes King, I must actually do that, that's my latest, my new challenge now, every area before I get there, I must actually do some work for you. Okay, this is, uh, it, as far as I did that for the last workshop, I forgot about this, Heskes King Treatment Center, Tuflug is in Worcester, Heskes King is in Klapmuts, De Novo is in Kruifontein, Linda Lani is in Stellenbosch, and you can access the Department of Social Development. You should have this here in your circuit, in your district. Sanka, I'm not sure if it's a Sanka. Equilibrium is an NGO. And then also at your community day hospitals. So you do have access to something in your community and ask them to refer for, and remember the school must have a referral letter to the day hospital on a pro forma so that it is in the educator's the teacher's file, if you're learning support, that you can just fill in the name and the reason for referral and where to. So if you have, yes, and this is very important for the school, we call it to do asset mapping. So the SBST must sit and they identify all the centers or places of support in the area around the school. Yours will be far and wide. 
Remember, you don't have a closed circle, but that is the only places you can access. Get the name of it, get the person's name and a number. So that when you do need that service, that you don't falter around and Google quickly, Aye. Google quickly or in the directory, whatever way you do, and find the number. Once you find the number, your phone, they put you through from one extension to another. So find the, pl the place, find the person, and find the direct number. And you ask that person, I'm going to, is it okay, can I put your name on the list as support for our school? I've never had a school who came back to me saying they refuse to be part of. It is their work. So when you have a, a, a person, you have almost like open door. Okay, so that is important to do that. And that is all I'm saying by a donkey. I forgot to put on, is there any Muslims here? Nobody? I always put on Sukran also. <laughs> and to, you know, with the diversity, you know. I've got in Kosi there too, is there any Isikosa speaking? I've got that, that there. And then all the others who say we went once to France and now I can't speak Afrikaans. <laughs> so there, it is on there, find the French word, then you know what, which one it is. Yeah, there we go. So any questions? I'm, I'm going to first, uh, first want a few questions, then I'm going to recap for you what we started off. Any questions? As you have a kind in your school that you have drug use or alcohol or something, and you come to your school, so it's not just so over a week that you have a little bit What? What do you do? 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 Or social? Okay, the school is about teaching and learning. If what it does, if it impacts on either one, on teaching or on learning, you've got the duty to report. If I'm smoking Daha over the weekend and it never affects my schoolwork, I, I come to school regularly, I do my homework, I do all my assessments, I even pass everything. Why is it a problem for you? Because I'm not a problem for you in your class. I do not sell stuff at school. If you know about it, who told you? How do you know? Remember, you have to prove yeah. that he's intoxicated. Mm. Yesterday, I had a call from the school's counselor. She said she's got a learner here. He refuses to, because we provide, even the department, safe schools, you've got safe schools at the department. They provide, I call it pipi buckies. Mm. You know, that a, a little. Um, that, that we have the, not that the ones that the doctor used to screw top, it's almost like the spice bowl, man, it's more than the, the, the flip cap. And the drug test, it's a screening one, the five, for the five drugs, and um, he refuses to be, to be tested. So she asked me, what can they do? So the first thing I would ask, how did it come to your attention that you suspect that he is using drugs? Um, did you inform the parents? Yeah, they informed the parents, he refused, they informed the parents, the parents also said they're not going to allow their child to, to be in there. What is it that you would think now if the child refuses and if the parent also refuses, what would you think? Yeah, they're actually guilty, but they want you to have the, 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 the proof. And all the kids who have refused, it comes out later that they do, they are users. I haven't found one who's not a user. I must still find that one and then I will change my opinion. So I said uh, they must take this, it must become a disciplinary hearing because it, it's circular 22 says if you have a strong suspicion that a learner is using, you can test him, search for things without the parent's consent. Okay? Because for the time of the school, he's under your guidance and supervision. Okay? But you have to go with the SGB must sanction it, so you're not doing it on your own. Instruction from the SGB, and you must also inform the district office. And the child is suspended for the five in that five days. I call the parents to the district office. You know, when when a parent calls the school, they take long to speak to the principal. Many parents complain. They phone and they phone, and the secretary says the principal is never available. You talk, I say, Bridget Hosen from the education department. Whoop, the principal talks to me. Is he a principal here? We have a principal here? Yeah, okay, the principal is ducking. Okay, we won't say who he is. The principal 
they know they know the, the, the when the CM phone, they all always available. Even when the principal leaves the school ground, the the fact you if when you leave the school ground, you report at the principal, your HOD or whatever your rule is at the school. When the principal leaves, he has to inform his circuit manager. Therefore, if the circuit manager looks for him and he's not at the school, and the circuit manager phone him on a cell phone, then he often tells the circuit manager, how did you know I'm here? They were catching the joke. <laughs> okay, so remember that you, you do have rights. If you're really stuck, phone the people at the district office. They all have safe school officers. They all have psychologists. You've got three here. Yeah? You've got three here. Yeah? It's Dr. Van Bullion, she at your schools. Um, it is, um, what's the other one? Some Yiritaita, there's a new one, Peter Versaghi. The third one is, um, oh, is it not Oki, Oki is in Worcester, oh, but he's in Swellendam, the senior psychologist, but there's another one, there's three, and the senior, I can't get to the third one's name. Don't worry, we all know one another, because there's only a few of us. You only have three circuits, you have three psychologists. Remember, it's one per circuit. You have social workers, one per circuit, phone them. We call, the, the schools call us DB, the, the DBSD. If you're stuck, they must do this with you. If you go to the slide before that, to help you with asset mapping in your circuit, then you can access them and inform the district office because that they know if there's anything coming from head office, they have a heads up already. Okay, just to come back and I'm going to ask her and maybe you will be more eager to answer me now. If the child is using cannabis, you haven't seen that he's smoking. He's under the influence, but you can see by his behavior. You have a strong suspicion that he's intoxicated with cannabis. What do you do or what can you do with that kid in class? It's legal now, okay? It's legal now. Like that boy told the principal, it is legal. He's so happy, he didn't hear anything else. He just heard it's legal. Okay, that's the word they're looking for. So what do you as, if you remember, school teacher, your support is support which is not punitive but restorative. And that's the latest trend now, we are work a lot in the restorative practices. So it's not to punish the child, but to restore the harm that was done. Okay? So what do you, what are you going to do with those kids? Did I see a hand somewhere? They still don't know. What do you do with the kids who use alcohol? Who's drunk at school? You take them home and tomorrow it's nothing. Now what happens? And I don't want you to talk now that you had your chance because they, they're relying on you now. I want somebody else to say. Okay, Mr. Balloon, what do you say? <laughs> no, no, you had the balloon, you had the balloon. You see, that is also the kid's style. Yes, they contact the parents. Okay, so you put them back into the care of the... What do the parents say? I can't leave my work now. I can't take off, so I can't come to school. And then where do you put them? With who? <laughs> With who? Okay, remember if you send the child home and the parent is not informed or the parent told you that I cannot leave my work, there's no one at home and something happens to that child, the school is then to blame. Yes. So he said now they rather put the learner under supervision of a class aid or wherever until school ends and that is normal time going home, whatever happens after school time is with the parent, it's not with, wait, if anything happens at school, within school hours, it is the liability of the school. Remember that, don't release any children without parents coming to pick that child up. Or you or the parents, sometimes schools, take the child home and they hand the child over to the parent. And that is when they are, when they do what in the class? disrupting the whole class. Okay, now there's one thing that we now did not mention. 
Toezicht van iemand. No, 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 no. I didn't allow him to. You can continue further. So the first call is call the parent. If he if he's doing rockets in the class, take him away. Put him under surveillance. The parent can't come. What happens after that? Ask him. En dan gaan die SGB gaan besluit op een sanctie die je kunt en op die stadium, dat is een beetje die maar die storen te doen. Je gaat kijken naar die voorbereidde versieprogramma, wat je kan aanvragen vanaf die voorbereidde. En social development ook als diversion programma's. Ja, bij ons school is ook die SGB, er zijn bijna kwam er mensen op die SGB. Social workers, wat hebben we al eerder die versieprogramma's? Dat is goed, ja. That's good. Normally, the version program I have the first session, I have the parent and the group of learners, and the last one we have the parents again because then we have like a little certification, and you know the kids like party packets, like a braai, even if it's just chicken or just sausage, we they like a braai, and then we have that, and that is the end of that. They have the ten sessions. They, and sometimes we don't end off with the same number as in. Did you hear the, yeah, the importance? Is it important Exactly. Exactly. That is the that is the, the the way or the framework the school can function in, and that is the only lawful one. That if the child is a danger to others or himself, he's being removed from the class. If there's no parent or any significant other that can take care of him at home, the school keeps him at home. And in the meantime, they send out the letter from the SGB that there will be a hearing in the next. The minimum days are five days. They take seven days, but they can't take less than five. You can't say. Say it happens on a Tuesday, can't say tomorrow night there's a meeting. It must be further than five days. The SGB sit and they discuss. Many times if it is a, a, a first, uh, an Afrikaans seller, the drunk in, in, in South Sagarita work, in um, Dacha, it's, must now, it's now three, we had two. The illicit uh, drugs was the nicotine and the alcohol. Now we have three, because of Dacha also. He's underage. He may not use Dacha at school. And it is being passed as law for growing dacha at home and for private use, not to come and smoke it at school. Mr. Mr. Principal, they may not smoke it at school. It is for smoking at home in private. They're even going to investigate if they have like a, a what they call that, they cultivate the dacha, they grow it at home. If they have a whole plantation, they know that is not for private use, it's to sell. So they can confiscate it if they determine it is more than private use. Okay? So that is what I'm, if they, if you have dacha on you, neighbors always complain, or they have it on you, and they search and they find a stash. It's not a, a bunky, a bunky is in its small plastic bags for personal use. It's a stash. You are also maybe dealing. Yeah. They can confiscate it. So that there is laws also to protect the people and why they've passed the, a certain law in a certain way. It is for use. If you are alone or you are a, a, a parent, a mother and a father and four <coughs> children, you buy one bread for one day, you don't buy ten breads for one day. So they will see when you have the ten breads or when you have the one bread. And kijk hoe lach nou. Jy koop mos net een brood vir elke dag. So if you smoke every day, you're going to have one packet for every day. You, you can't have a lot. They can confiscate it. And do you, do, you, do you know what the law was before this law is passed? If there's any dacha find at home, grown at home or in your house, who's at risk? The one who brought it in or the parents? Who's at risk? Hmm? I, I hear you mumbling something. Why the parent? They're in charge. Who agrees? Let's see who agrees it's a parent. 
Who agrees it's a parent? Yeah, they I'm writing for that word. If it is a minor under 18, the parents will be charged. If it's over 18, the child or the whoever brought it in will be charged. If the name, the house of the name is registered in either the husband or either the wives or in both names. And that person will be charged because he's allowing whoever to grow that dacha on his ground. So that was the law. Many, many a few people knew about that. Okay, any other questions? Mm. So yeah, that is what he explained. You follow. That is the the the, the law, the rule with the SGB. And remember, he said uh, the first call is that the child must get help, because if he's in that stage, he can still be helped, and recovery will be quickly. If we leave it, then he will go into dependency. If he isn't there already, because remember, kids start to smoke early on. But the, the teachers must have at their hearts to help that child first. And you'll find that, I don't know what your statistics is for the, for the uh, um, expulsion, that head office, the expulsion committee, they don't expel as fast as they used to. Because we want to give the kids all the chance to complete their schooling and become independent adults. So and, 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 and I had a meeting with, with, with um, I have a meeting with circuit by circuit the principal and the SGB um, governing body chairman and three principals wanted to choke me because why did I not expel the kids? They were very rough, but uh, I'm used to rough principals. <laughs> the director was a bit, a bit um, scared. He ran off, he said he, he was gonna go early because he needs to go to gym. <laughs> And the next day he called me to the office to say, how did it go? He said, oh, but he's so proud of me. I stood my ground and all that. And I said, yeah, but you were scary kid. I just see, I just see baby blue jacket, the way you spit out of the hall. But it was, it was very rough, one of the rough way. Schools don't understand why the children are not expelled. I've picked up in all the expulsion ex letters, there was about 125 reasons why kids are not expelled. And it's not because of they smoke dacha and now they're not expelled. It's because of procedural yes. errors. Procedural errors. Or using an old, um, old misconduct and just merge it with this one. Six months is gone, it's gone. You deal with that misconduct. Any other questions? No, can you mafra? Okay. Any others? Have information, have the facts. If you have the facts, then you can tell them. So if you have, if you have kids in your own personal, your own kids who are using, then what I did with my own son, with the cannabis growing in amongst my plants, I told him, I can see where it's leading to, I know. I don't want you to acknowledge that you are smoking cannabis and I don't want you to deny it. But while you stay under this roof, it is not going to happen. If you want to, take a window house, you can even take this old one in the yard and go live there on the bank of the river. See? And that is what we call tough love. And we say it from that day. Our parents, we read enough in the tabloids that parents hide what the kids are doing. And I talk about that and he knows. He knows, I talk about my friends and to family, said, that was where I've been. Because you know, other people, they are hard on you as a mother or as a father. If they see those things and they say, you do nothing, then they don't know what you've gone through. We all know the story of Ellen Puckis. You are, uh, guys are going to watch the, the movie now and to go through that pain with her. It's not an easy road. So send the first time when you find out of a family member or your own child that is involved in anything, take him places, take him there. Even if you have to pull him there, take him there. The younger he is, the easier it is to pull.
because they get to a certain stage where they <coughs> bigger and stronger than you. So you pull them there. You take away all, um, what is that? All, I can't get an Afrikaans word, all, all privileges. No pocket money, no luxuries, no watching TV, no keep him solid, make him miserable to be alone. He will stop it, leave it quickly. It has taken us as a family a year, but he stopped it. It's tough, it's tough, but it helps if you severe, if you persevere. So persevere, don't give up on that person. They want you to give up so that they can do it. And then they say, confirm, oh, you don't care. So even with your school kids, don't give up on them. They need, remember, often they don't have the significant other at home. Then you become the significant other. Don't give up. That person, the people who are here in work capacity, if you have people who's addicted, don't give up on them. Even if a few times you go with them to a support group meeting, it means a lot for them.